welcome in the previous video uh, we have talked about different roles of neutrophils when it will reach at the site of infection it will do the phagocytosis it will release neutrophil extracellular traps and in th today's video we will talk about the release of chemical mediators and the function of different types of chemical mediators before starting the point first of all let me explain we know that in the previous video we have talked about that on the surface of pathogen, special molecules called as pat pathogen associated molecular patterns are present and on the surface of neutrophil, pattern recognition receptors are present and these receptors will recognize these molecules present on the pathogen and after recognition, this neutrophil will get to know that this is a foreign particle and it will protrude out its membrane over it and it will try to phagocytose it. Now in this state, we call that neutrophil is activated, our neutrophil is activated then it will phagocytose and the pathogen will be trapped inside the uh, organelle that is called as phagosome there is another organelle called as lysosome which contain lysosomal enzyme and reactive oxygen species now this lysosome and this phagosome they will fuse to form a phagolysosome and now this enzyme it will cause the destruction of these pathogen okay now there is another one thing that is going to happen is <coughs> Because of the activation and because of the phagocytosis, this intrasarcoplasmic calcium, it will release out of the uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, sorry, endoplasmic uh, calcium. We know that smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a reservoir of calcium. Upon the activation and upon the phagocytosis, this calcium will come out of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum inside the cytoplasm similarly some extracellular calcium can also come inside because of the uh, through these uh, membrane channels okay now now what this calcium will do this calcium is very important second messenger and this calcium it has capability to activate an enzyme that is called as phospholipase a2 phospholipase A2. We are going to talk about the mediators. Okay. Now this enzyme phospholipase A2 has been activated in the neutrophil. Okay. Now, now let's see what cytoplasm uh, phospholipase A2 will do. This phospholipase A2, it will convert cell membrane phospholipids of the neutrophil. You know that neutrophil uh, cell membrane will be is, is made up of phospholipids now those phospholipids will be converted into arachidonic acid with the help of this enzyme phospholipase a2 okay now this enzyme will convert cell membrane into arachidonic acid on the arachidonic acid two important enzyme cyclooxygenase and lipooxygenase they will act the cyclooxygenase enzyme also called as fox enzyme cox enzyme it will convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandin G2 that will be converted into prostaglandin H2 and now this prostaglandin H2 will be converted into prostaglandin I2, prostaglandin D2, prostaglandin E2 and thrombaxin A2. Now these four mediators will be formed from the prostaglandin H2, I2, D2, E2 and thrombaxin A2. Okay, So in this way these different kind of prostaglandin these are the mediators that will be formed that will be formed by the uh, by this uh, Cox pathway. There is another enzyme that is called as lipooxygenase pathway. It will also act on the arachidonic acid and it will uh, convert arachidonic acid into 5 hydroxy per eicosanide tetraoic acid. Okay, now this uh, 5 HPETE will be produced from the arachidonic acid with the help of an enzyme lipooxygenase. Okay, now this. 5-HPET, uh, it will be converted into lipoxin A2 and lipoxin, uh, lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4 with the help of an enzyme 12 lipooxygenase, lipoxin A4, lipoxin B4. This 5-HPET, ETE will also be converted into leukotrienes family, leukotriene A4, leukotriene uh, C4, D4, E4. Now where is B4? Leukotriene B4 will be found from the leukotriene A4. Leukotriene A4 will be converted into leukotriene B4. 
so there are five midi you could run a a uh, a4 b4 c4 d4 and e4 these are the five uh, mediated that will be produced by this LOX pathway. Similarly, lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4 will also be produced from this pathway. Now, we have discussed the production of different kind of mediators. Now, let's discuss the role. Role of different, different kind of mediators. There are certain inflammatory mediators and there are certain anti-inflammatory mediators. So, first of all, let's discuss the pro-inflammatory or inflammatory mediators. Prostacycline, uh, uh, also called as uh, prostaglandin I2, it's a vasodilator. P prostaglandin D2 vasodilator. E2 is also called a uh, is uh, is a vasodilator. So all the prostaglandin that cause a vasodilation, they are very inflammatory because because of the vasodilation, more blood flow will move toward that particular area and redness that is the sign of inflammation will appear. Similarly. Uh, prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin E2, E2 they, are called, they also increase the vascular permeability. Leukotrienes, they also increase the vascular permeability. And because of the increase in vascular permeability, the fluid from the blood vessel, it will leak out. And once the fluid from the blood vessels, it will leak out because of increase in vascular permeability. Membrane has become more permeable now. The fluid will leak out and it will cause the uh, edema or uh, fluid accumulation or swelling of that uh, area where the inflammation is going on okay <clears throat> that is also a hallmark of inflammation you can uh, learn more about the hallmarks of infl inflammation in my previous videos okay now these leukotriene family they can also cause bronchospasm or bronchial smooth muscle constriction because of which breathing difficulty in allergic asthma patient appear so this is the reason lipooxygenase inhibitors or leukotriene inhibitors are often given in allergic asthmatic patient to uh, inhibit the leukotriene induced bronchoconstriction now these all we have discussed they are the pro inflammatory cytokine prostaglandins and leukotrienes they are, are the pro-inflammatory cytokine here you can see leukotriene b4 very important chemotactic it causes the chemotaxis of the immune cells at the site of infection <clears throat> what is chemotaxis i have discussed detail in the previous video chemotaxis is once the neutrophil has entered inside the tissue now for example there is a site where the pathogens are present now how neutrophil will move toward this site in the tissue this procedure is called as chemotaxis this step is called as Chemotaxis. Now, and in the chemotaxis, uh, leukotriene B4 play a very important role. Leukotriene B4 plays very important role in the process of chemotaxis. <clears throat> now, point is, <clears throat> there are some anti-inflammatory cytokine uh, mediators as well. For example, lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4. These are basically anti-inflammatory. They inhibit neutrophil adhesion. Obviously, neutrophil adhesion means they will not let neutrophil attach on the cell membrane. If it will not attach on the endothelial cells of the blood vessel, it will not get migrated inside the tissue. So, these lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4 inhibit the neutrophil adhesion and they also inhibit the chemotaxis. Chemotaxis. This process of moving the white blood cell towards the site of injury is called the chemotaxis uh, induced by the leukotriene B4 and inhibited by the lipoxin so they are performing the fun function against the leukotriene b4 leukotriene b4 was causing the chemotaxis lipoxin a4 and b4 they are inhibiting the chemotaxis and they are inhibiting the neutrophil adhesion so there are different kind of mediators and their <coughs> role in the inflammation has been discussed obviously to to stop the inflammation different kind of medications like steroids that block the phospholipase uh, are given like uh, NSAIDs that block the cyclooxygenase enzyme are given. There are certain medicines that are uh, that block this lipoxygenase enzyme that are given. So different kind of uh, enzymes can be used as drug target as well to inhibit to stop the uh, inflammation. Okay, then neutrophil upon the activation upon the activation. 
first of all, I pays enzyme A, A, A will be get activated and different kind of mediator will be formed. And these mediators are called as newly formed mediators. Newly, because they are newly formed. After the activation of this enzyme, they will, the senses of these enzyme will uh, uh, start. So they are called as newly formed mediator. When the intracellular calcium level will increase, some preformed mediators, for example, in the previous video we had talked about lyso uh, lysosomal enzymes, they will release out of the cell. Lysosomal enzymes, they will release out of the cell. Okay, now they are not newly formed, they were already formed, they are just released out of the cell. So, this type of mediators that were present inside the neutrophils and they will just release upon the activation of neutrophils, they are called as preformed mediators. So neutrophil will release both preformed mediators like lysosomal enzyme, like serotonin, and it will produce some newly formed mediators like prostaglandins and leukotrienes and lipoxins. Okay, so different types of types of mediators are formed. Similarly, some intracellular signals to the nucleus can activate certain cytokines genes, for example, interleukin 8, for example, interleukin 1, for example, tumor necrosis factor alpha and the role of these mediators has been discussed in my previous video in which we discussed about the transmigration. So here you can see what TNF do, what I interleukin do, what interleukin A do. So it means uh, neutrophils can release preformed mediators that were al already present inside the granules. They just they will just release out of the neutrophil. They will produce some newly formed mediators by using Cox and Locks enzyme from the arachidonic acid and they will release some uh, cytokines as well for example interleukin 8 interleukin 1 and, and uh, tnf okay so these are uh, different kind of mediators and their role that are present and released by the neutrophil has been discussed uh, in the next video we will talk about some types of inflammation serous inflammation and uh, fibrinous inflammation and we will discuss their <coughs> uh, histology as well